gratitude we want to come before the Lord and thank God for the life and for the ministry of our general overseer Dr. Mensah Otabel. We are asking for God's increase in health, protection, wisdom and favor as he continues bringing leadership and vision to the world. Lift up your voice. Let's pray together. We thank you Heavenly Father for your faithfulness to your servant, for your faithfulness over the years. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your provision. We celebrate your grace and favor. We thank you for every single blessing. The blessing of this church. The blessing of family. The blessing upon this nation. As a result of his life and his ministry. We give you thanks for what you have done with his life. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We honor you. We thank you. We celebrate you. And we ask for increased anointing. Increased protection increased wisdom and increased favor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for good health for your servant as he continues to bring leadership and bring vision to our generation and generations after us. We thank you for the story of his life and we thank you that tomorrow is better than today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You want to continue to pray for the International Central Gospel Church to continue fulfilling our mandate of leadership vision and influence and you are asking God and declaring that in this season of restoration things will come together for the good of this church lift up a voice let's pray together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we thank you for a season of restoration we thank you for the prophetic word of return recovery and restoration we give you praise for the mandate of ICGC for leadership, for vision, and for influence. We declare, Father, that in this season, things will come together for the good of your church. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, expansion of the frontiers of ministry, extension of our impact, the multiplication of our influence across the continents of the world, lifting high the banner of Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that this ministry will flourish beyond every single continent across the continents of this world in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilling the mandate of leadership and of vision and of influence we thank you for a season of restoration return and recovery in Jesus' mighty name finally you want to pray for Christ Temple Easter God will raise you up as a pillar of support for this project and you are praying that God will cause the resources to flow to make you a kingdom financier in Jesus' mighty name. Kindly lift up your hands as we beseech the Lord to open and prosper us. Open doors and prosper us to finance the kingdom. Let's pray together. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask, oh God, 
for grace, grace to possess wealth and grace to finance and support the kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We commit the Christ Temple East project into your hands and ask, oh God, for the supply of resources, supernatural supply, more than ever before. Let the resources flow in for the cause of the kingdom. We thank you for Christ Temple East and we thank you for accelerated progress, accelerated inflows of resources in the mighty name of Jesus. Raise kingdom financiers like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. Every single one of us putting our shoulders to the plow for the kingdom. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When we speak about faithfulness, we are talking about reliability dependability and someone who is unshakable and today as we gather to thank God for the life of our pastor we sing about a God who is faithful with the strength and power in us want to join and let's praise as we sing the hymn great is your faithfulness
we celebrate 60 years of the goodness of God. We celebrate 60 years of the favor of God. We celebrate 60 years of God's covering over his servant. And as a church today, we gather with one message to say thank you, thank you, and thank you to God again for his amazing and amazing grace and the abundance of his blessings upon his servant. Why don't you put your hands together and give God praise? Hallelujah. Kindly be seated in God's presence. On behalf of Dr. and Mrs. Otabel, it gives me great joy to welcome you to Christ Temple of the International Central Gospel Church and to this beautiful Sunday morning. We are gathered unto the Lord and today is a day specially dedicated to thank God for the life and the ministry and the gift of our pastor, Dr. But let's put our hands together for the Lord. It's now time for us to love the Lord, celebrate Him, and honor Him with our giving. A time to give is a time of great rejoicing because God has been good to us. And today, as you package your offering in the envelope, be mindful of the fact of the scripture that assures us that God will cause men to give unto your bosom, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. If you would like to give digitally in the church today, please activate the various options displayed on your screen or on your envelope and go ahead and give digitally. Helping us to receive our offering with a song, the Lord's Prayer, let's welcome Lumina and the Accra Symphony Orchestra. Let's put our hands together for them.
let's appreciate Lumina and their cry symphony orchestra. Let's kindly stretch out our hands as we pray the Lord. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your provision and for your blessing. Today, as we present our seed, we present also our lives to you. In this month, in the days and the weeks till the end of this year, let there be supernatural interventions. Let your provision be real in our lives. Let there be miracles and testimonies. And may your name alone be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Lumina and the Accra Symphony Orchestra were founded by Dr. Otabel as another expression of the diverse dimensions of this great servant of God. And they will come back and minister the overture, followed by a song honored, glorified, and exalted, which was put together by Dr. Mensa Otabel. But before that, on this very special occasion, as we thank God for 60 years of the life of our pastor, we brought him a very special treat, a voice and an instrument we know he loves. All the way from Lagos, Nigeria, help me welcome Nathaniel Bassi.
forever This God you are too much I will worship you forever
to him we ascribe all majesty and crown him Lord of all. One more time, let's put our hands together for Nathaniel Basse and for Lumina and the Accra Symphony Orchestra. This morning we gather to give God thanks and would like to specially acknowledge several very important people who have joined us in this service. Let me announce that we have a very respected general overseer in our midst, a very dear friend of our pastor, and he will be introduced shortly. But let's respectfully acknowledge the presence of the presbytery represented by the general secretary and the regional overseer for, for Western and Central. Let's put our hands together for Reverend Maurice Apia and Reverend Alex Butch. Let's put our hands together for them. Let's appreciate all our district supervising ministers represented in the house. Please rise to your feet, all DSMs, including all the way from Europe, Reverend Rotary. Let's put our hands together for them. Thank you so much. Let's put our hands together for our area supervising ministers. Please rise to your feet. And all other pastors and officials who have joined us from the head office, God bless you so much. We thank you very much. We would like to appreciate a long-standing friend and ministry colleague of our pastor, the Reverend Eric Papon. Let's put our hands together for him. Let's appreciate especially the pastors of ICGC Christ Temple. Let's put our hands together. And their spouses, please rise to your feet. Pastors and spouses, okay, thank you very much. And then definitely last but not the least, the wonderful congregation of ICGC Christ Temple. Let's put our hands together for ourselves and thank God for, for giving us such a wonderful pastor and for being part of this great house. Let me say that after the service, the jubilation and the celebration and thanksgiving continues. In the first service, we had the Daughters of Glorious Jesus and Akese Primpong. After the service, we have the Soul Winners and Joe Metal joining us to celebrate the Lord on the lawn. So stay, stay behind, let's dance and let's praise the Lord. We have a special celebrant in the house today. And he has chosen on the day of his celebration to rather give out a gift. So today, if you look on the screen, you will see various expressions of some of the finest quotes from our pastor over the years. And he has put these quotes in special plaques. So right under your seat, if you slip your hand under your seat, that gift bag there belongs to you from Pastor Otabel. Some of his favorite writings packaged for you as a gift you can keep for life and that your grandchildren will ask you about and you will say it was Otabel at 60 to the glory of God. Amen. What do we say to our pastor? We thank you God. Let's put our hands together and say thank you to our pastor. Thank you so much for your thoughtfulness. We also have a gift for our pastor and in our own modest way, every department, ministry, small group and working committee was thinking about what they could do and we said why don't you just do your cake in your own way with your own words and express what you want to tell our pastor and we said it would be very wonderful if we got 60 cakes as a symbolic gesture of 60 years guess what we got 95 different cakes arranged on the lawn with a Christ temple cake sitting right there in the middle iconic and representatives of the various departments lined up. Why don't you put a round of applause together for them? And after the next segment, they will cut those cakes and the celebration will continue. We give God praise and we give God all the glory. But at this time, why don't we rise to our feet together as we sing Happy Birthday to our pastor led by the various music groups. Happy Birthday
very special occasion I would like to invite somebody who has known and worked with our dear pastor for about four decades to bring a statement and to introduce Dr. Otobo. Help me welcome the Reverend Eric Odropapon. Let's put our hands together as he comes. If I were you, I would do it a little better. We are celebrating the birthday of a transformational leader, a game changer. Somebody whispered to me outside, he said, if you gave Ghana to this man in two years, he will change it. I believe it. If you believe it, lift your voice. My God, my God, my God, my God. On the talking points for some time now, there's a lot of conversation going on about things that if you are a, you know, a student of history, you would know this man dealt with. 30 years ago, the Ghanaian attitude and so on, and it's big news. But guess what? He's left it. Now he's dealing with 54 nations and the principalities that govern it, the African continent. He's speaking 20% growth. I don't know about you, but this is the man we celebrate. Lift your voice. And by the time they get there and it's the talking point, he'll be 30 years ahead. He'll be speaking to China and speaking to every other place else. And we give God praise. Please take your seats. Today, we gather to honor a true servant of God, a visionary leader, a man of Christ-like character, an impeccable integrity. Impeccable integrity. Whom I've known, for about four decades, Dr. Mensah Namwa Otabel is not just an ICGC or Ghanaian icon. He's an African and a global transformational novel icon. That's who he is. He is a symbol of leadership and vision and influence for our dear continent. Let me talk about two main things today. The man and the minister. First, the man Mensa Otterville. When I first met Dr. Otterville, there were two things that struck me about him, his passion for the vision he had and the genuineness with which he pursued it. You could literally see the passion in 
his eyes and that attracted me to him but interestingly as I got closer to him and got to appreciate the person the giant the gentle smile I noticed strong personal values that undergirds his life and I was even more impressed I found him to be a very kind and compassionate person who cares about people and would do everything in his power to help people who are disadvantaged in any way let me tell you one thing else that struck me his unusual understanding of human feelings I remember he told me he said Eric life is not just black and white because between black and white there are several shades of gray and so we must be understanding of people's weaknesses not that he endorses them because you'll have to be responsible but in the process he's there to hold your hand that's the man we celebrate he's a man who loves family he loves family if you know him and honors his wife in an exemplary way you talk about impeccable integrity at home these are the attributes worth celebrating I remember several years ago because I remembered it like it was yesterday uh, you know we were doing a walk and I was you know just looking at this lady nothing you know to it and I said hey Eric yeah Lee Russian to do I should be here to do I said oh I'm just I'm just a you should wait in me I'm called cow cow I said yeah Meaning that, Eric, you are taking too, you know, you are taking too much time scrutinizing this girl more than the word of God allows you to. And so get on, let's keep going. This, this is the man we are talking about, and you don't need a boldest report to tell you who he is. Oh, I just said that. I just said that. I just said that. I just said that. Over the years, I have come to deeply respect Dr. Odebill as a pastor, Christian statesman, and theologian of unparalleled scholarship and distinction. I truly admire his incredible depth of understanding of God's word and the ability to communicate even difficult and intricate truths with profound clarity to both great and small, to the sophisticated and the unsophisticated. At a time when the very foundations of our faith are being questioned, you have repositioned the church, sir, to understand our mandate, our message, and has helped that you've helped us to make our message even more relevant to the world. Your sound theology enables you to seamlessly speak to the church, to the marketplace, and the world at large, and you break down the issues for simple understanding. Your commitment to the body of Christ and your zeal and favor for the Lord are infectious. In fact, no one can sit with you and not imbibe a bit of that Christ-centered outlook on life and on your life. Everything you talk about must have one conclusion. How does this advance the cause of Christ and his kingdom? Many times when we get to sit for long periods and I hear you speak about Africa and your vision for the future of this continent and the church, I come away telling myself, this continent, Africa, needs Mensa Otabel, and the Lord, the Lord, may he produce one Mensa Otabel for each African country. I salute you, sir. I do. I stand here to honor Dr. Otabel as a pastor and as a general in the body of Christ, but I honor him even more as a fine human being and a husband, a father, a grandfather, a man of compassion, a man of integrity, and a genuine Christian. Dr. Otterville, we believe that God is proud of you. Ghana is proud of you. Africa is proud of you. Today, as we thank God for 60 years of your life, we say, Aiko, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord continue to make his face to shine upon you. The Lord watch over you and your family. The Lord will fight for you. And we will fight for you. We thank God for your life. And so ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the celebrant, 
the man of God, God's servant, Dr. Mensah Odebill. We ended with a song, Onipen to me, Sainia, Yehovah Shirano. Come on now. Nakwa. Sainia, Yehovah Shirano. Nakwa, Yina. Let's give God praise. Let's give God honor. And let me thank all of you for your warm wishes and for your prayer and for your presence. I truly appreciate uh, the way you have honored me today. And I pray God will honor you and bless you abundantly and supernaturally in all that you do. Uh, today is a special day, uh, although uh, uh, I'm 60 years, 15 days uh, now. Uh, uh, just to, to remember all that God has done over the years. You start life very young and you think that uh, 60 years is for old men. Uh, and then one day you wake up and you are 60 and you are wondering whether you are an old man. Because today, uh, officially, I am on pension. Uh, in Ghana, 60 is retirement age. But we refuse to retire. Uh, we will refire. I told my wife uh, when my birthday was approaching, I said, please, I don't anything. Uh, keep it quiet uh, because uh, as most of you know I'm a very quiet person and very private person. Um, although my life puts me in the public, my life generally is very, very private uh, and I stay indoors most of the time. Uh, in fact, when we had the 31st of August, which was the birthday just a few of us, my wife and I, our four children, for those who are married with their spouses, and our numerous grandchildren. And uh, that's all. Those were the only people we were with. We just sat, sat down, talked. Just thank God for life. Uh, I prefer to live my life that way, although God has put me in the public sphere. And so I wanted a very quiet celebration. So when we were coming to church this morning, I really didn't expect anything uh, until uh, we entered the church compound and I saw somebody wearing a t-shirt with my head on it. And, uh, and so I was wondering, what's going on in this place? <laughs> you know, so then I saw people lined up and clapping and all of that. And then I came and saw all the nice things that uh, my wife has uh, Yesterday she said she was coming to Christ's temple. I should have known that there was uh, a trap being set for me. Uh, but uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks to all the pastors and the leaders uh, for your hard work and all the church workers. Uh, this is a phenomenal church. And even if I'm on retirement, I will, I will be called back to service in this church. Uh, it's just a great honor. Amen. Well, let's make our declaration together. Are you ready? Say with me, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. By wisdom, he has founded the earth. By understanding, he has established the heavens. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Today, I incline my ear to the instruction of the Lord and my heart to his spirit. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I have the mind of Christ. His word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Therefore, 
My steps are ordered in righteousness. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. His wisdom and knowledge are the stability of my life. Today, I declare the word of the Lord. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for me. I am blessed in Christ. Salvation, favor, and increase are mine. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen and amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. And uh, it's just a joy uh, to celebrate the goodness of the Lord this morning uh, because it's um, uh, a day uh, to celebrate me. I am not preaching. Um, I have a very dear friend of mine uh, who has come here uh, just to share a few words with us. Um, in my life, I have very, very few friends. I know many people, relate to many people, but very few people who are very close to me. And one of them uh, is here to speak to us. Uh, you know him already. My dear friend, Pastor Ransford Obing is here. I, I have known Pastor Ransford uh, since 1975. Uh, when we were all uh, young men uh, serving the Lord. So I've known him for about 44 years of my life. Uh, and God has used him tremendously. Uh, he's a great inspiration to me myself. Uh, he's older than me, uh, although he looks a, lit, a little reduced from my height. Uh, but he's older in age. Uh, I should call him my senior brother. Uh, Pastor Ransford is an awesome man, a man uh, I truly love and appreciate and respect, and I can trust him to speak on such an occasion. Please welcome my dear friend, Pastor Ransford Obing. Thank you. Let's keep standing as as we go to God in prayer this morning Father we've sung praises to you we've worshipped you this is the time for you to speak back to us I pray that may your Holy Spirit take these words and Lord distribute it the way you want everyone to receive it and I pray that at the end of this service everyone will go home with the word of the Lord. Bless in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Um, I count it a great honor to be here this morning. And uh, it's not easy, you know, when somebody is celebrating his 60th birthday. If you were in the public service, we'll be doing farewell you know, yes, that's what we'll be doing farewell service, you know, because you'll be leaving the organization. And uh, as I was told to come, I said, Lord, give me a word for them and also for this church. And as I prayed and waited upon the Lord, I believe I have a word for each one of us. So what I'm talking about this morning is the God of much more. Everybody say the God of much more. Again, the God of much more. And before I read my test, let me give you the background of the test. This is taken from the life of David. David was a king. God bless him so much. Then he sinned against God. And we all know the sin of David. And David tried his best to cover up as a king because he had the power. And so after he had done everything to cover up, he thought 
he has finished with everything. But interestingly, God was watching and God was quiet. And he waited for a long time when David had forgotten about what even he had done. You know, sometimes you do something and God is quiet. That doesn't mean that he's not seeing what you are doing. You know, many times uh, we think that, you know, as soon as you do something that is not good, straight away something should happen. No, it doesn't happen that way. God will wait for the right time. If you yourself does not repent, you wait for the right time to speak to you. So this was many years after David had done this. Then the Lord sent his prophet to him to remind him and let him know that I have not forgotten. I still uh, know what you did. And that is where my text is taken from. So if you have your Bible with you or your iPad or your phone, wherever you have, Second Samuel chapter 12 verse 7 to 8. Second Samuel chapter 12 verse 7 to 8. And I read, Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus hear the Lord God of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel. And I delivered you from the land, from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. Read it. I want you to see what I'm reading carefully. He did not say he gave him his master's wife. He gave him for her, for his keeping. Are you hearing me? You know, sometimes when you read scriptures, you need to emphasize so that what the Bible is not saying, people will not think the Bible is saying that. So he said, I gave your master's wife into your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you what? I would have given you what? Much more. That is where I got my team from. The God of much more. You know, when God came to David and he was speaking to David. I want you to listen carefully. He was not a poor man. You know, if God were to speak to a poor person, somebody living in poverty, we wouldn't have a problem with it. Because sometimes as Christians, we can get to a point and think that if you have too much money, is bad. It's not good. Especially when it comes to pastors. Hello? We think pastors shouldn't get money. So here is David. God said, I anointed you to be a king. I bless you. I've given you influence. And remember, David at that time was one of the well-known king in the world. And David was living in his house when God gave him that word. So what God is telling us is that God has no problem blessing us. And he said, David, I've given you all this. And the amount of blessing that Dave, God had blessed David, if it were you and me, we would say, Lord, it's all right. This is enough. So let us go to another person. But God said, David, of all the blessings I've given you, he was living in a big house. That tells me that God has no problem living in a big house. Hello? He has no problem the car you drive. You can drive the latest car. God has no problem. You can have 10 cars. He has no problem because he told David. Because David had so many servants. Those days when you talk about camels and donkeys where they used to travel, uh, he had thousands of them. When David is going to sacrifice to God, he sacrificed thousands of animals to the Lord. So David at that time 
was very, very rich. Filthy rich. Filthy rich. And yet God said, if that is too little, you, you ask me and I will give you what? Much more. So it means that God wants to bless all of us. And the word the Lord told me to tell Dr. and Mrs. Mensah Otabe that indeed God has blessed you. At the age of 60, if we look at what God has been able to use you to accomplish, the lives that you have influenced, we will say, oh, that is great, wonderful. But God says that that is not enough. I am the God of much more. I want to do more than that. So don't limit me. And don't let the mindset of people, the mindset of Ghanaians, limit you. Because you have done so much. And as I said at the first service, those of you who come to report, I want you to put this on record. Pastor Ransford said it. Put it on record. This man we are talking about, Dr. Mensa Utabe, has given employment. In fact, he is solving the Ghanaian employment problem we have single-handedly to a lot of people but I want to break it down so that you will know and you say what employment how many people are seeing employed through him ICGC came into being now they have over 900 churches every church listen every church even the smallest one employ not less than 5 people because every church has a pastor some have assistant pastors if you have a secretary apart from the secretary you have the caretaker who takes care of the church property apart from that you employ people to watch over the place the security or the watchmen whatever you call them so every single church even the smallest one the biggest one they employ more people so even times 900 times 5 how many people hello so I want when you are writing bring Ghanaians that have been able to employ give employment to thousands of people we've not talked about the university yet that has not yet come in so there's a lot that this man has been able to accomplish and yet the God we serve said the word I should give you is that that is not enough he is the God of much more he wants to expand your territory he wants to do more than what you are imagining this is what God said I should tell you you know God don't have a problem blessing us so remove that from the back of your mind in fact the problem God has is that if he blesses you if you will not allow your heart to be turned by the blessing and you begin to serve the blessing instead of the blessing so God tells us in Psalm 62 verse 10 Psalm 62 verse 10 the Bible says do not trust in oppression nor vainly hope in robbery if riches increase which it means it will increase if riches increase do not set your heart on them you know the Bible says that a faithful man will abound with blessing anybody that is serving God faithfully he did not start like that you all know his background but if you are faithful serving God I want every one of you to hear because sometimes you will live in a country and you think that the only way I can get blessed is to go the Kululu way 
if I go straight away, I won't be blessed. No. If you, you do what is right, you will still be blessed. Amen? And so long as you are obeying God and doing what he is asking you to do, blessings will come. Whether you like it or not, you will be blessed. But it will be better when you believe and expect and so that you can expand. Many times we limit God with our mindset. God is a rewarder. He said, anyone that comes to him must know that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God will always reward faithful people. But he's telling us this morning that don't put a limit on him because he's the God of much more. He wants to bless you more than what you think. And let the church say, Amen. The second one is what I want you to listen to me carefully about. The second thing God wants to do is about one of the kings of Israel. At a point in time, the nation of Israel was divided into two. We have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was made up of ten tribes. And then the southern kingdom were two tribes. Mostly, it is the southern kingdom kings that sometimes they are spiritual. Not all of them. Most of them start well and then they always end up in another, a different manner. So one king, King Amaziah, he was the king of the southern tribe. And he was going to go to war. They were only made up of two tribes. So he realized that there is no way they can defeat their enemy. So he went to his brother, the northern kingdom, who were made up of ten tribes, and said, we want you to help us with some soldiers so that they can join us for us to fight our enemy. And then the brother said, that is good, great. But before I give you those soldiers, you must pay for it. So he asked for 100,000 soldiers and he paid for that amount of money. And that is where the next story is and I want you to turn to it and then we'll read it and I'll explain to you. So, 2 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 6 to 9. 2 Chronicles 25, 6 to 9. 2 Chronicles 25, 6 to 9. He also hired one hundred thousand mighty men of valor from Israel for one hundred talents of what? Silver. The talent here is money. In those days talent was money. It wasn't ability. Today when you use the word talent you are talking about ability. That's why those of you whenever before you sit under any pastor sit under a pastor who knows the Bible who knows the grammar the Greek of the Bible otherwise they will butcher up the Bible they will tell you something that is not uh, uh, the Bible is not saying because you read talent and today when you say talent you are talking about skills you are talking about ability but he did not give skills and ability. He gave money in exchange of skill. The king gave money in exchange of ability. Because he didn't have the soldiers. He didn't have the ability. He didn't have the skills. So he gave money. That's why if you read the Bible, Jesus talked more about money than any subject. Because he used the word talent, talent. So when he says, oh, talent, talent, talent. So whenever you read the New Testament, you read talent, know that it's money. It's what? 
money that's why he said he gave these two talent and everything and he was expecting they went and invested it and then he asked them one came and said this is the profit I've made amen okay so he gave he gave money and one talent is a big sum of money big sum of money so he gave the, the money verse 7 but a man of God came to him saying O king do not let the army of Israel go with you for the Lord is not with Israel nor with any of the children of Ephraim but if you go be gone be strong in battle even so God shall make you fall before the enemy for God has power to help and to overthrow which was good news so what happened is this in fact what the king was supposed to do is that before he took the decision he should have gone to consult the prophet because in those days the way they hear from God I said in those days listen to what I'm saying in those days you see anytime your pastor is preaching know that you are listening to an intelligent person somebody who has studied the book that he's preaching for in those days if you want to have direction in those days not today in those days in the old testament if you want to have direction you go to the prophet and the prophet will give you direction what about today today the holy spirit directs us So he should have, the king should have consulted the prophet and he didn't do that and he went ahead and paid the money and hired the soldiers so when he was going now he wanted to consult the prophet then the prophet came and said the Lord said don't take that hundred thousand soldiers you went to pay it for with you because God is not with them and if God is not with them you'll be defeated so I want you to stop the king had no problem with allowing those hundred thousand people to go because what he wanted is victory so if with my few soldiers you can still give me the victory I don't have a problem isn't it yes but the problem the king had was this and that's what I'm going to show you what was the king's problem verse 9 then Amaziah said to the man of God the prophet but what shall we do about the hundred talents which I have given to the troops of Israel the money in other words let me put it this way in other, you know, I understand what you are saying. Yes, prophet, I don't have any problem. But remember, I paid a huge sum of money. Maybe he went even and borrowed it from the bank. So I have paid this money. What do I do with the money? Because I want to hear what God has to say. And this is what God told the king. And he said, and the man of God answered, the Lord is able to give you what? The Lord is able to give you what? Everybody say, much more. This is the God we say. In other words, listen, what God is telling this man and what God is telling us today is this. In life, sometimes we make mistakes which is true the most intelligent people still make mistakes sometimes we take decisions that are not good and it has repercussions 
But God is saying this. No matter any bad investment you have made. He said, if you will listen to me, like this king listening to the prophet, and take the steps I'm telling you to take, it doesn't matter what you have lost. The God of much more will restore unto you whatever you have lost. Some of you, this is the prophetic word for you. Because sometimes we enter into business with a clear mind. According to the paperwork, everything seems prosperous. It's great, wonderful. And then you go into it and you sign the contract. Later on, you realize that things doesn't work the way it was supposed to work. And sometimes we regret. God says, if you are like that, I have a word for you. He said, he's the God that can restore whatever you have lost. All that you need to do is this. Listen to what God is telling you to do personally about that situation. And once you take the step to the king, he told him, don't allow this is uh, soldiers to go with you. And he obeyed. So, so long as you hear what God is saying, God says that I will restore everything that you have lost and it will be more than enough because he's the God of much more. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 25 so I will restore to you the years the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust the locust the locust was many I mean look at that swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust the consuming locust the chewing locust hey, my great I mean, he said it doesn't matter so that is telling us that it doesn't matter where you are Somebody say, Pastor, my case is well. So, whether it is the swarming locust, whether it's the chewing locust, because what happened is that after this locust finish, what they leave, the other locust will come and do it. Then the little they leave, the other locust will come and they finish everything. Maybe your case may not be so. God says that it doesn't matter if your case is so. It doesn't matter whatever the locusts have eaten, God says, I will restore it unto you because I am the God of much more. Some of you, it may be your health. You are struggling with your health, you are losing your health. This is the word of the Lord for you in Jeremiah chapter. And stand upon it and pray. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. He says, For I will restore health to you. And heal you of your wounds. See of the Lord. Because they call you an outcast saying, This is Zion. No one seek her. God is saying, If it's concerning your health. He says, He will restore health unto you. I pray that. As we celebrate our pastor's birthday, every one of you has his strength, so shall your strength also be. Tap into that anointing because the oil that flows from Aaron's head goes down to the hem of his garment. It touches. And so anything that is flowing, so you say to yourself, Lord, as you increase my pastor's ears and you increase his strength, so also shall my strength be. Are you hearing me? None of you, listen, I say this, anyone that is younger than us, if you are younger than your pastor, you will bury your pastor. But we will not bury those of you who are younger than us. We refuse it. I say we refuse. We will only bury those who are older than us. 
because it is the younger that buries the older not the older that buries the younger and so I want you to believe and trust God if you are not yet 60 say I'll be 60 and if and, and if you are 60 say I will go beyond 60 I was telling pastor that when they gave the 95 cakes even though they were asking for 60 it is prophetic they are saying you'll be 95 Amen. So God is saying that whatever you have lost, there's a restoration coming because we serve the God of much more. Then the last one I want to give you is Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 10. Romans 5, 6 to 10. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even die to dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love towards us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 9. Much more. Everybody say much more. Much more. Then having now been justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through his death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What the Bible is saying is very simple. You know, sometimes the enemy comes to us and he says, you are not good for anything. You do something that is not good you sin and you have confessed and you know God, uh, and God has forgiven you but you hear messages that portray the fact that we are cursed and so I've seen Christians talking and uh, uh, casting oh I'm being cursed I've been cursed I go to places and at the moment I finish preaching pastor I want you to pray for me because there's a curse in my family and everything God said I should tell you when you were an enemy when you didn't know him and you didn't care for him and even you were doing things against him he says that at that time he loved you and died for you and he's saying that now that you are a child are you hearing me now that you are a child when you were not a child I still love you and died for you now that you have become my friend now that you have become my child then my love is much more than when you were an enemy are you hearing me you see if you hear this message it doesn't matter any prophetic thing that somebody will say to you and then you get so much worried no when i was an enemy Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is the essence of the man. Because now you are his child. He loves you much what? More. So he says that in Matthew chapter 7, he says that if you need anything, ask. He said, knock and the door shall be opened. And then he says that those of us who are evil, if your child asks you for fish, you will not give him a stone. He says that if those of us who are evil can do that, the Bible says, how much more? Everybody says, how much more? Your heavenly father, who is not evil, who is a good God, he is ready to supply and give you more than enough. Are you hearing me? And in conclusion, what I want to say is this. Ask yourself, what do you think is the greatest thing that can ever happen to you? Think about it now. What do you think? The greatest thing that if it happens to you now, you say, I've got my breakthrough. Think about it. Some of you, it may be marriage. Some of you, it may be healing. Some of you, it may be some money you are looking for. Some
some of you is if you are employed some of you passing your examination because you've tried several times and everything no, some, whatever let me tell you if you have already discovered the greatest thing that can happen to you have you discovered it then let me give you a prophetic word I say I want to do what give you a prophetic word this is the word God told me to tell every one of you Ephesians 3.20 Ephesians 3.20 Let's all read it together. What does it say? Now to him who is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or what? So what you were thinking about, he said he's able to do more than that. That explained that he's a God of much more. So if you are thinking of one million. He said, I can do more than I can give you 10 million. I can do more what than that. So anything that you are thinking of, God is telling you, I can do more than that. Doc, what you have seen, God says, he can do more than that. He can do more than that. And so never put a limit on God. And don't allow Ghanaians to put a limit on you. Because that we serve the God of much more. May the God of much more bless you. Meet all your expectations. And take you to the next level. In the name of Jesus. And let everybody say, Amen. How many of you know you have entered into a season of much more? We are going into a season of much more and God will do far more for you than you've ever experienced. Amen. I feel like 20 years all over again. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. We will still be going strong at 95. Thank God for the 95 cakes. Amen. Please be seated in God's presence. And uh, thank you, Pastor Ransford, for bringing us a word in season. Um, he's a man you can trust to always bring an appropriate word, and we thank God for his life uh, and for his ministry. We pray that God will do far much more uh, for you also in your life and in your ministry. We're going to take our uh, project offering, as you know, uh, we said that for our new Christ Temple East project, we are trusting God that this offering, the project offering, is what we would use to uh, pay for it. And I ask all of you to make commitments, specific commitments, and be consistent with it uh, as we finish up the project. I believe that if each one of us gets committed without any pressure, we will finish that project. So uh, for all of you who have made commitments, we encourage you to continue giving. And we encourage you to be consistent. Everybody say consistent. All right. So you don't just do this week and then next week you miss. Even if you don't come to church one week and you come the next week, you have to pay the week that you weren't here. You have to be consistent. If you go out and you you on vacation, and you go and stay away for 10 weeks, you will come back and pay all the 10 weeks when you are away. Amen? This offering is not based on church attendance. It's not based on church attendance. It's based on commitment. So whether you are here or not here, you give. It's a permanent giving for one year. And after one year, if the money is not enough, uh, I will come and tell you and I will extend it. Amen? That is what uh, God has blessed me with at 60 years. To raise money. Alright, now, I, 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 the last time I gave you an update of the project, so I'll just give you a quick update and then we take our offering, just for you to know where we are in the project. So, uh, let the PowerPoint people, okay. 
Uh, so this is the Christ Temple update. Well, the background you see the building as it will be when we finish. Uh, last month on the 10th of August, I gave you an update of where we were, and so I'll just show you where we were last month and a month later uh, where we are. So let's look at where we were last month. Last month, this is where we were. Uh, we had completed the steel structure. Uh, the steel roofing and uh, all the steel work had been done. Uh, so, next picture. All right. The steel. All right. Now, this is where we are now as of yesterday. These pictures were taken uh, yesterday. And this is where we are now uh, with the building. Um, I said that the roofing was going to start and the roofing has started and the roofing is almost done. We have, oh, you're going too fast. Why are you going too fast? Why are you running to? All right, so as you can see, the roofing uh, is almost completed. We are left with just uh, one bay at the top and a couple of bays downstairs. Uh, when you see there are three levels, uh, and you see something like some corrugated sheet in there. Uh, those are the various floors and this particularly uh, the middle floor is where the children are going to be at the top. We're going to have our ballroom and our conference room upstairs. Uh, the auditorium area is leveled. We're going to start pouring concrete for the auditorium this week and so next month when I give you a report uh, I'll show you the concrete work and also the cladding, the covering of the building will also be done. Um, after that, we will be almost completed with the physical structure as it is. The next phase would be uh, to finish it with electricals and lighting and air conditioning and chairs and so and so forth. We need a whole lot of money to make that possible. So this is where we are as of now. And I always like to remind you of where we are going. So we always have the past, the present, and the future. So let's just, all right, so this is uh, uh, where we are now. So where we're going, um, how we would look like next year by this time, this is where you will be attending church. So this is where the building is going to be. This is the entrance of our church auditorium. Uh, I can see your car already driving there. Amen. And this is the corridor around the building uh, with a bronze nice structure there. Um, and this is the uh, foyer, the lobby of the church. Um, it's going to be quite a sight to see. Um, this is the lobby where you'll be drinking coffee uh, in the morning before church service and some tea if you are British. And this is the auditorium we'll be sitting in next year about the time. All of that is possible through this envelope. All of that is possible through this envelope. So take your envelope. Uh, if you haven't made a commitment uh, to support this project, kindly lift up your hand if you haven't made a commitment so I can, just a few people, all right, just a few people. We just want you to make a commitment and the commitment you make today, you are going to stick with it for one year, for one year. Uh, we've already been uh, around this, is it for a month or so? Uh, we've been committed to a month. So if you make a commitment today, uh, you have to pay one month arrears uh, for not being part of it. Uh, please, uh, you're going to take appropriately. Uh, just to let you know, in the last couple of weeks, uh, the, the giving has gone down. Uh, you were doing very well uh, two weeks ago, and I told you you were doing well. And then you backslided. You're not doing too well. Uh, so I just want to encourage everybody, consistency is the game. If we raise the money, I will let you know we've raised the money. If we're not meeting targets, I'll let you know we're not meeting targets. There's no gimmick about this. It's straightforward. It's commitment to ensure that we finish the house of God. So for all of you who the last week you forgot or the devil tempted you 
or you travel for a funeral and didn't bring your money, please return last week's money and return today's money as well. Uh, you made a commitment to God and you have to fulfill it. All right? So everybody just make sure that you fill the envelope and you give the amount you committed to give. You give the amount. If for some reason you are not able to give one week, the next time you bring the arrears. The arrears. So if you committed to 50 cities and you, you give 40 today, next week you have to bring the 10 cities that you didn't give in addition to the next 50. I hope you, you understand me. Uh, because based on your commitment, I have also made commitments. I have made commitments based on your commitment that the church is going to bring in this amount of money uh, at this time. Based on that, I've put my word out. Don't disgrace me and don't disgrace God. It's my 60th birthday. Don't dishonor me. All right? Please. So please, uh, consistency is, is key. You have to keep your word, and we have to all keep our word. Amen? All right. So the band will minister as we uh, take our offering and give generously as the Lord has blessed you. The band.
Timba at Christ Temple. Make a date every Tuesday. Theme, Building a Christ-Centered Family. Tuesday, 17 September is the Family Life edition of our Personal Progression Tuesdays with three sessions as follows. Singles Not in Relationships. Topic, Choosing the Right Marriage Partner. What Singles Must Know. Speaker, Elder Amos Kevin Annan. Singles in Relationships. Topic, Premarital Sex. The Trap, The Impact and Solutions. Speaker, Dr. Fred Bracco. Married Couples. Topic, Raising Godly Families. Dealing with Addictions, Abuse, Unfaithfulness, Financial Recklessness and Workaholism. Speaker, Dr. Isaac Newman Arthur. Tuesday, 24th September, Communion Service. It's a day of consecration and fasting. Make time to come through Christ Temple to pray anytime from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. as we build up to the evening's communion service. Service time is 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Wisdom is the principal thing, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Celebrate them, celebrate them. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate them. Thank you so much. God bless you for choosing Christ Temple. We would like to invite you for an interactive reception next week, Sunday. It will be after the first service at 9.40 to 10 a.m. And after the second service at 12.40 to 1 p.m. Ahead of that, please fill the Let's Connect card in the package given to you and hand it over to the ashes or at the front desk before you leave. Just to remind us all about our personal progression Tuesday that falls this Tuesday to bring together our relationship month in a special way. So we'd like to encourage every one of us to be here on Tuesday at 6 p.m. as we break out into various sections of the family. Finally, we'd like to announce that the celebration continues after the service. Just to say that refreshment has been provided for all of us on the car park in front of the children's church and also daughters of glorious Jesus and like I said bring Pong were with us in the first service but we'll have Joe Metal and Soul Winners with us right after the service Today, let's dance, let's rejoice and let's give praise to God it's been a beautiful service why don't we rise to our feet together as a mark of appreciation as we welcome Pastor Mensah Otabel to close the service let's receive God's blessing the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. The Lord establish you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord make you the head and not the tail. The Lord cause his goodness to go before you. This week may the Lord give you much more than you have thought of. Much more than you have dreamed of. Much more than you have expected. Everything that was lost may God give you far more than what you have lost. May the Lord bring you into a full season of restoration in every area of your life. And go from this place with this confidence and assurance that in Christ Jesus, you are more than a conqueror. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon and we'll see you on Tuesday night.
I am who I am because of you. If it had not been for you, tell me where would I be? I was lost and sinking deep in sin. But you reached out to your hand and rescued me. No one else can do the things you do. There's no one else but you. Yeah. I am who I am because of you. If it had not been for you, tell me where would I be? I was lost and sinking deep in sin. But you reached out of your hand and rescued me. No one else can do the things you do. Hey, oh God. There's no one else but you. Yeah, what an honor, yeah. What an honor, yeah. What an honor. No one else but you. What an honor, yeah. It's a new job, what an honor, yeah. It's a poor dog. There's no one else but you. Never thought that you could love someone like me. Your life from 
You are the mighty God. You are the great I am. Lord, there is none like you. Oh, Moko Benita. Hallelujah. Everybody sing hallelujah. 